I think for me, I feel safer living in my minivan than I ever did living in an apartment building, in an apartment. And according to some of the rest of you who have left comments on the video from two days ago titled The Real Truth, you expressed the same thing and some of you told stories that happened living in an apartment building. Well, I've been talking about the influence, the events that have influenced my desire to be a nomad. Why do I find this lifestyle so appealing? And I woke up one morning and I was thinking about that and four events popped into my head. Well, two days ago, on the video titled The Real Truth, I talked about two of them. They were very similar, but they were two events. And today I'm going to talk about two more. Two events that were in my life. One indirectly and then one more directly. And both of them this time have to do with apartments. Well, I'm Minivan Lee. And I have lived in my minivan for six years and I really enjoy it. I mean, it's not rainbows and unicorns every single day, but I really do enjoy it. Now, some of you are new to my channel and you have a lot of questions. So, and I love them. I've been answering a lot of your questions recently. Um, for those of you who have been with me for three years, it's almost a couple of days shy of being three years exactly when I started my YouTube channel. And some of you have been with me and I just love you. Thank you for sticking with me all this time and welcome to all the new viewers of my channel. I'm different. I'm a little bit different and I have a lot of variety. I don't always just talk about the nomad life. I ponder things. <laughs> I just am constantly looking like, why? And why is that the way that is? And I'm very much interested in human behavior. Why do we do the things that we do? I do have a bachelor's degree in behavioral sciences, and I graduated from the University of Arizona. I've lived in Tucson for 40 years, not four, but 40. I was born and raised in uh, Northern Ohio, but I left early on as an, as an adult um, in my early 20s. So, and I have four children, all of them professionals. And I am a widow and my husband passed away very young. And I was a single mom for years. And you can go down and find the video called uh, 25 Years Alone, where I did spend 25 years alone, and I did not date. Um, I just raised my children, and then I got so used to being alone that it continued on. But I do have a travel partner now, and it's a romantic relationship, so I'm not just alone, but 25 years of my life was alone, and, and I really enjoyed it. But there's another perspective of my life if you want to go down into the videos and discover that one. Well, look at this. I did make you coffee. Here you go. There's yours. Cheers. Let's have coffee. Let's discuss this. And let me tell my story here. Um, it's, it, there's violence in both of the stories. One a little bit more than the other. But isn't it funny, um, events in our lives affect us in our decision-making throughout the years. Now, I've talked a lot about get rid of the past and, and create your own future. I'm a, I'm a big believer in that, that some people say, well, I don't know the future. What I don't know what the future is. Well, but ah, we can create our future. You will know the future if you, if you can vision where you want to go and what you want to do, it will open up for you. It's just, the it works that way. It just does. Now, I don't know what the details are. The details might be a little different than what you vision in your mind, but the end result is going to come. So, what you hold in your head, you hold in your hand. 
that's an old saying and I find it to be totally true. So we can vision and decide what kind of future do we want to have? Well, so if I'm talking about this back here and not this, why would I be doing that if I'm so bent on looking toward the future? Well, because our minds, the human mind is a very complex machine and we can go back to the past. But if we can take the emotions out of it that, that sometimes paralyze us, oh my gosh, you know, we think of the past and we, we just, and there's so much emotion still attached to that thinking about the past that it, it can paralyze our future and we drag it into our future. But if we can take that past, take all the emotion out of it and learn something from it, we can turn it into wisdom and then move forward into the future. So with that said, I want to talk about two instances in my life that I do believe influenced me and led me to um, almost uh, glorify the nomad life because I think I feel safer. I think it looks like a safer situation. Well, let me go back. This was in the early 80s and it has to do with my grandmother. She, the last time I saw her, she had moved to Pennsylvania and the last time I saw her was when my oldest daughter was went back to Ohio to visit my parents and my oldest daughter she was just a little tyke well we got a, my mom um we my mother went with me and we got the four generations you know my grandmother my mother me and my young my oldest daughter at that time well that's the last time I saw her but she did move to Pennsylvania w along with um, my mother's sister and her husband. This was in the 1980s. So let me get started with this. She was a Baptist. She had become a Baptist, you know? Um, and I, I only mention that because it's part of the story. Well, there was a young fellow, more my age, maybe a couple years older than me, who lived in the apartment below her and he became a problem. According to reports, he was a Vietnam vet and he was obviously having mental problems. And as a lot of uh, Vietnam vets did, they came back and they just, they didn't get much help. People called them names more than celebrating as did like in World War II, right? Well, uh, and this is my this is my generation that I'm talking about. A lot of them came back um, just um, damaged, damaged. Well, he lived downstairs and she had a lot of problems with him. He would be knocking on, uh, you know, like knocking on her ceiling because she was above, so it'd be her floor. And he would go up to her apartment and accuse her of talking to God about him. Yeah. Well, I can only surmise that maybe at some point she did talk to him about God. I don't, I don't know those little details. Or sometimes the walls are so thin in apartments that he may have heard her praying or listening to the TV, something like that. I don't think these are very posh apartments, but I wasn't there. Well, what happened was it ultimately um, came to a head one day and my grandmother complained to my aunt and my uncle. And so they said, well, they'll come and talk to, them, talk to him. This is probably around maybe five, six o'clock in the evening. Well, earlier that day, he bought a gun. He bought a firearm. That's this is in the in the in the news. It was in the news. I mean, this was a big deal, and in the area where my grandmother lived. 
and my aunt and uncle came up and talked to my grandma and they said they agreed that they'll go down and talk to him. Well, they knocked on his door and he opened the door and I guess they started talking. Well, all of a sudden my grandmother could hear downstairs uh, shots fired. He killed my aunt and my uncle, dead. He just killed him. Then he proceeded, he heard, my grandmother heard that. Then he proceeded to just shoot up, boom, 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 um, into her floor. Yeah. Well, I mean, I'm not emotional about this. Um, you know, there's no, there's, the only emotion is that that's scary. These, and it, it, it affected me in, in a very uh, profound way when I heard about this and I, um, I wasn't overly close to my grandma and I will mention why these, it isn't relevant to the story, but it's relevant to my life. Mm. Tastes good. Um, I wasn't, I, I was close. No, I was never close to, um, my maternal grandmother because my mother was the oldest and my grandmother, I guess, had a lot of health issues after giving birth. So my mother was with her grandmother, which would be my great grandmother. And when it was time and my mother, my grandmother felt that she could take on my mother. Um, my mother wanted, she wanted nothing really to do with her. <laughs> she didn't really know her, you know, she wanted her grandmother. So ultimately my, um, my great grandmother raised my mother. So, and then of course my grandma went on to have a large family. But I don't know, it was, just, it was a little confusing as I was a child. I was closer to my paternal grandmother, my dad's, um, I called her Grammy. Grammy and Papa, yeah, Grammy and Papa, yeah. Um, we, I was very close to them. But I still had an affinity for my grandmother. I mean, as I got older, I, I started realizing, well, that's my grandmother. Why, why am I not having a great relationship with her? So, um, so I was very interested in what had happened. And it was, it was, it was, I was devastated by it. I thought this is, this is crazy. And I was devastated for the fact that this can happen. And apartment buildings can be so dangerous. There's one of the reasons, and I believe that that affected me. I began writing to my grandmother when I heard about it. And I'm, we, we got a little bit closer, but only through, you know, like pen pal, but writing. And then she passed. But I really remember contemplating how horrible that would have been for her to hear her daughter and son-in-law shot dad. Of course, at the time she didn't know. I mean, it wasn't until later that after the, she was probably terrified having gun bullets come at her. So yeah, okay, well, that's that story. And it, it came to me one morning I was laying where I sleep here in my minivan and I lay down my bed and I was thinking about the incidences of why I'm so attracted to this lifestyle. Why was I from the very beginning? Those incidences that I talk about are not the catalyst for me. Like, oh, I must go live in a minivan. I must go in a vehicle. But when I first saw it on YouTube, my daughter alerted me to it. Um, she saw a video um, on Bob Wells and she says, mom, you got to see this, these videos. And I'm like, okay. And, um, this was probably a good four or five years before I ever became a nomad. And I was like, wow, I started watching them fervently. And, um, yeah, it was, I was, I was amazed. And I remember seeing the vi a video on with the, with the minivan. And I thought, without with a no build and I thought that's what I want and I don't want a, a build out because I saw some with build outs where they have bed frames and their beddings on top of it and they can store things underneath I did not want that I'm more of a I'll sit on the floor I'm more of a hippie bohemian type I'll sit right on the floor I'm very agile I've done yoga all my life I don't really call it yoga anymore it's really stretching 
because I've tweaked it so much. But yeah, I would stretch and I've been into dancing. I've had ballet. I've just been one of those that loves to walk, exercise, keep fit and trim and eat healthy. So yeah, when I saw that, I thought, oh my gosh, I want that. I want to live like that. That looks so fun. I like small spaces. The, the minivan would be mine. I wouldn't be renting anymore. Right. So, but it, so those incidents aren't the catalyst. They're just, they created, they influenced my desire. They influenced my, my wants and needs. Right. Now, number two, the second, I love sitting on this perch. This is my storytelling position. <laughs> I love it. It's really, it's just different being up here. I'm usually in the back, but you've been watching me for a while. You know that. So let's fast forward to the mid nineties in Tucson. I was a single mom. I was a widow at that time. And I just moved into these apartments. Well, about a month after moving in, I got a knock on the door. So, okay. I looked out. And I recognized that it was a it was a it was a, a man that lived below me. So I opened the door. He was not a happy camper. He was uh, quite um, hostile and upset, and um, began berating me for making too much noise. That's one of the issues with living in an apartment. Yeah. If you're down below, you're gonna hear people walking. I mean, we're not a rambunctious group, but I'm sure we were walking around and he could uh, obviously could hear it. Well, he had a long coat on. I remember it was a long trench coat. I thought that was kind of odd. And he said, if I hear any more noise up here, and he opened his coat, you'd think there'd be like a shotgun in there, but oh no. He had a hammer and I swear, and I'm not kidding, it's not a fish story. This hammer had a head on it, a twice the size, twice. And it was just, it was sitting, in, it was in his coat. Like there's a pocket inside and it was sitting in there and he just opened his coat and he looked at me. Well, it was pretty shocking. And uh, you know, one of the reasons that I, I don't, I never can uh, forget that is because after that I had had, um, you know, bad dreams about it. I dreamed, I kept dreaming for, for even after we moved away, we didn't stay long. After moving away, I would still have these dreams that the floor of where I was living, sometimes it'd be a house, sometimes, you know how dreams go. It doesn't make sense, but there would be like, there were holes in the, in the floor. And I always had to be careful. I could never be comfortable walking around because I always had to make sure that I was on like a board to walk across the room because there were holes in there. And I know that was from them because I started having them afterwards that I felt like subconsciously it was like um, there was no solid ground under, underneath my feet living in an upstairs apartment. Yeah. So... I mentioned to the um, the manager of the apartment and told him what was the deal. And they pretty much favored him because I guess he'd been there for a while. And he had a couple sons. I guess he was a single dad. He had a couple sons. And there was no proof. He would have denied that he had that hammer there, but it was there. He was letting me know that he was dangerous and he could turn violent. So there's number two. Now, I did get one comment, and I can't think of your name. I, I forget to write it down, but you said that you lived in Tucson, and you had problems in the main, the central part of the city. Something had happened, so you had to go to, to or you'd lost your job or something, so you had to go more to the south side of Tucson, and it was just crime-ridden, Yeah. There was a lot of violence um, and pretty much slumlords were running those apartments. Yeah, there's little enclaves in Tucson 
Tucson can be the wild west. Yeah. You have to you have to be able to stand up for yourself in Tucson. You just do. And uh I mean if you're gonna go way up like in the foothills and go way up in the northern area or way northeast, oh you've got some real nice homes. You've got better schools. Oh yeah, but if you're central in some of the areas or you're going start go um south, yeah. It can be it can be pretty pretty tough, yeah. It really can. So, and I know you know I've had um, my kids had to be quite street smart when we were living in apartments. There's a lot of issues with apartments, people. You and some of you, I'm gonna guess that a, maybe like half 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 of you have lived in apartments you are you do not have did not have large bank accounts uh, maybe you were single moms you had to spend your money for your kids and not so much in stock market and and, and uh, thinking in those uh, wealthy abundant terms some of us have lived in lack for a long time and we we had to there were struggles going on financially so we could raise our kids. Well, I'm going to say the other half have never had that problem. You've never had that. You're either in the suburbs, you've lived in the suburbs, you've you've been married for a very long time, and you have no issues with money whatsoever. You you're homeowners, and you have always had everything that you need to to maintain your home, pay your taxes. So, to those of you who, and I, I'm happy for you, I really am, because I'm sure your kids went to better schools and things like that. So kudos. I'm, I'm not um, denying you that you should uh, not have been happy about it. That's great. I'm really happy because uh, we're all different. But there are circumstances that maybe lead us into not having every little thing that we need. And we have to struggle for it. So for those of you who are more, uh, we're more in the abundant side and still are. Yeah, apartment building, living can be very dangerous. It really can. You're at the mercy of a lease. Once you sign that lease, you're pretty much like for a year signing your life away. They can take your credit down. They can, they can just, I mean, there are agencies in government who can protect you. Oh yeah. But when you do complain, there are retaliation laws that will protect you for a time. Once that runs out, I think it's like six months. Once that runs out, oh, look out because you're going to be gone. And they could, they could, <laughs> I mean, they could, after you leave, they could say you damaged this and damaged this and damaged this. You're at their mercy. Somebody's, don't hit my car. <laughs> Somebody's pulling away. So, these are my stories for the day. And the noise level is rough in an apartment building. Parking, oh my gosh, yeah. What did you say in your one of your, the one that lived in Tucson, you said that there was a bomb threat. There was a bomb in a car. Um, her car got hit out in the parking lot. I'm telling you, man, man part, apartment living, which is one of the reasons after apartment living and I started telling you about the leaky roofs, I had stopped living in apartments and I went to living in houses. But that's what happened. But I still had problems. I'm trying to look back at all the apartments I've ever lived in. I don't know if there wasn't one if there was even one where I didn't have any trouble whatsoever, <laughs> I know, um, or any of my rentals. So as you can see, I love my minivan. I just love it. This is my minivan in my living area. Yeah. I have everything I need in here. I mentioned in the, my last video about this subject that the only other thing I might, that I really kind of miss is having a sink a sink but I would not put a sink here because you really have to clean that thing all the time oh my gosh no I would not want a sink I just use like a I have a collapsible bucket there we go. 
yeah and uh, wash up in here and I wash I don't wash my dishes in there only my face and my body as far as dishes go I have um, vinegar water or I use alcohol paper towels yeah. so <laughs> those are my stories and I'm sticking to them yeah <laughs> I love you guys cheers So please do me a favor. I'm a really, I read all, all of your comments. I read every single comment. I don't hire somebody to do it. Um, just to give you a clue, the, the, like really large channels or even medium-sized channels, they pay somebody. They don't have time. Um, well, I, <laughs> I mean, I, I, I don't have time either, but I do it. But they do pay somebody to do the comments. And um, a lot of them admit it that they don't read comments. That somebody else answers for them. It's me. I'm a, I'm a one-woman show here. I read all your comments. And I love hearing your stories. So please, let me know a story. I, if you feel like telling it extensively, you can always email me if you want to just do better at, at typing. Maybe on your computer, send me an email of your stories. Um, and uh, maybe some of them I'll read on, on a video. I mean, some of them, they've been so interesting what you have shared with me of why you became a nomad or why you are um, drawn to this lifestyle. Yeah, I'm drawn to it. And I realized that those four instances and events made me perk up when I first saw it. It's like, that's a perfect alternative to paying rent. Wow. Yeah, I own my minivan. I own it. I paid cash for it. I own it. Doesn't mean I'm not going to have problems with it here and there, but I've got, as long as you have a little bit of a savings, you can fix it. And then I like to have enough savings that if I have to buy another one, I can do that. Okay, everybody. I love you. Mm. So go to minivanlee.com and for uh, neck gaiters, some of you asked what kind of material this is. It is, it's a very soft woven knit. It's made out of polyester, but it's very, very stretchable and it is very, very soft. I've got, I wear, in the winter, I usually wear two of them. It, it just creates like that don't go it creates sort of a turtleneck look and I've got different colors I've got the big sunglasses and I've got videos um, exercise videos that you can um, purchase and what else oh I've got the book how to live in a minivan the minivan leeway lots of lists it'll get you from the very tip of the beginning all the way to the end and beyond and with lots of lists and I, I've got each subject broken down and I do believe it is the best nomad book that's ever been written it's not expensive it's short and sweet but it's long enough and everything that you need to know is there with lots of lists of what how to get started so with that said I love you guys I'll see you tomorrow Leave me comments. Bye.